we see the cat damage is crossing the yellow area which we will say the region of interest where we are going to focus where we take the picture we move the picture to the artificial intelligence we see the picture on cap emg i was recently reading a research made by capgemini group which analyzed the use of ai and computer vision on 300 different companies and among them, there was one which caught my eye. Let me read something to you. General Motors analyzes images from cameras mounted on assembly robots. It detected 72 instances of component failure across 7,000 robots, identifying the problem before it could result in unplanned outages. And this is huge that you can find the problem before something worse happens. Because the cost of just one minute or production line downtime for a company like that can be as high as $20,000. And this is just an example that I saw there, but there were many different companies who had an interesting story. Why this? Because big corporations in opposition with small and medium companies cook the opportunity that AI and uh, computer vision is offering them right now. And so it happens that the gap between small companies and corporation gets bigger and bigger. Hi there, my name is Sergio and I help companies, students and freelancers to easily and efficiently apply visual recognition to their systems. Why are not small and medium companies investing as much as big corporations are doing? Well, based on my experience, I found three main obstacles, or we can say fears, that are stopping them from doing this investment. The first one is the cost. They are afraid that the cost is not worth the money in the long run to implement such system. The second is that they are afraid that they need to stop the production for a day or for weeks. And so either they cannot afford that because everyone has deadlines or if they can afford that in terms of deadline it would be a loss for their production and third that there are not many professionals who are able to understand their needs and offer custom solutions and to reply to these obstacles which are more fears i can share with you a story which is already five years old when for the first time we had such custom solutions and this from Japan, there was a guy which was a system designer and their parents had a cucumber farm. Let's get straight to the point of their problem. They had nine different categories of cucumbers. So Makoto's mother was classifying them based on what we can say the quality. So that they could sell the best category for the highest price and the lowest categories for the cheapest price and in the middle they had different prices based on the cucumber quality. There was a big problem which was how to classify them. Only Makoto's mother was able to do that because it wasn't only about the size or the color but there were ma many features like if they had prickles on them, if there were some scratches, also the shade on the, of the color and so on. And if they needed to hire someone to do the task, it would require moms only to teach to that person how to do the task because Makoto's mother did that based on her many years of experience. So Makoto thought about a solution on how could the parents only focus on the production of the cucumbers and an artificial intelligence focus on the distribution, so classification, of these cucumbers and he came up with an idea of taking a camera taking pictures of 7000 cucumbers and he made classify these cucumbers by her mother and he used that to train an artificial intelligence algorithm in order that he could understand automatically how to classify this cucumber and the nice thing that he got 90% accuracy, so the algorithm was able to classify as Makoto, Makoto's mother was doing just by using a computer. 90% accuracy on the picture that he had already. And even with the cucumbers that the machine had never seen before, 
it would get a 70% accuracy. But anyway, 70% might mean not enough, but this was five years ago. Now, with easier solutions, we will get for sure closer to 100%. And Makoto's mother was spending eight hours per day doing that task. And that task after that was done just by a machine which could spend 24 hours with almost no cost except the one for the electricity. If you had to estimate the solution that Makoto's mother implemented on their farm, how much could you value that one? A solution that took the task that Makoto's mother was spending eight hours per day per year that a computer could make 24 7. How much would you estimate that? And then also, did they need to stop their production while Makoto was building the solution? Well, probably not, because he was building that on the side while the manufacturing this, uh, the farm was still going. And the most exciting thing that we're going to see today is that I'm going to build a solution from scratch. So we're going to, I'm going to show how a company, small company can implement such solution from scratch. So starting from the problem, I'm going to build a software which solves the solution. And at the end, we will see what results it can get. So stay tuned. Uh, let's suppose that there is a company, manufacturing company, which produces these wonderful golden caps and what they want to do and by the way the company is for sure this one caps limited which doesn't exist but it's just for making an example what do they do they want to make sure that the quality of their awesome products is up to their standards before they get distributed so let me show an example of what I mean by quality. And for doing this, we're going to watch a video where I show you the different caps based on their quality. So this is the golden cap, how it should look like. But during the production, there might be some problems. So there might be some defects like this one, where there is some problem with the shape. And of course, the shape might have many problems. There might be some scratches like in this example, or it might be like almost destroyed like in this case, if something wrong is happening during the steps of the production. But the shape is not only the problem. There might be some problem with the color. So in this one, for example, when the machine on the distribution that needs to provide the color is not working well, and you see the color is uh, not there yet as it should be and this is mostly the type of problems that the caps can get so let me summarize first one the cap is okay it might be shape problem on this second one color problem but also they will be moving on the conveyor belt and it might be upside down and we don't want that for some reason on the production and what happens if they will be moving on the conveyor belt? If there is someone, if there is a human who is checking the caps, then how many a person can see uh, in an hour? Is possible to see one per second, a person checking there one a second for many hours in a row? Probably. But if a person in, is doing the task, I'm sure that the precision wouldn't be so great for many reasons. The person might might be uh, might get tired, and it's really hard to check them if they're moving fast. But also, if someone is doing that task, it he will get insane after just a few hours or just one day of work, just doing this uh, uh, terrible work. I will say. What if we teach a machine to do that? And that's what we're going to do right now. And this is going to be done in four steps and we will see one by one. So let's start with step one. Uh, right here, right now, I have a video which represents the original view of the camera on top of the conveyor belt. So the first step is quite simple to think of. And this is the object detection. So when the caps are moving we need to know exactly where 
each cap is so we need to know the position surround them with a box so that later we can proceed with the other tasks so for this specific case i implemented an object detection solution that i'm going to show you right now and it's by running this code this will be object detection especially for these caps and now we see that each cap that is on the conveyor is surrounded with a green box so we know the location exactly of each one and this is the easiest step i will say because there are the caps moving on a, um, on a black conveyor on a control light environment so it's quite simple after step one we're going to move to step two the second step after the detection will be the tracking of the object so as you can see in this example we are not only surrounding them with a box but we are assigning a number so we are counting them but also now you can see this uh, area surrounded with a yellow, by a, a yellow rectangle and why that because in that specific area we're going to take a picture of the object so that in real time we can make an analysis of the object so each uh, now you see on one side we have the conveyor belt on the other side we have only the picture of the cap that we are focusing on so cap 17 moves on we get the picture 18 we get the picture 19 we get the picture and so on with this picture we can now move to step number three uh, step number three is the most complex one but it's actually the one that solves the real problem of the company it's the one that does the most important work and this is the one of the classification task in this case to decide if the caps are fine or if they are either damaged in color damaged in shape or if they are upside down and in this specific case i have a deep learning model built on keras from scratch which solved this task it doesn't really matter the framework you use whether you use pytorch or different frameworks as long as it works and so what does this deep learning framework do it takes the image that we have in real time from the conveyor belt and it classifies either if like this one has color damage and we see here color damage or shape damage like for, ex for example this one to train this deep learning model i had a lot of picture of the caps and for example we had a lot of caps where they were fine so when a cap this beautiful golden cap is fine it looked like this of course you see there there are some some difference in some of them because of the lightning so a good deep learning model should also adapt to different uh, lightning change so if the, uh, the manufacturing company is working day and night for example on the day there will be the natural light on the night there will be the artificial lightning and so there will be some change on how the caps are seen and this model can adapt also to these changes these are the great uh, cap caps then we have color damage if the color is damaged they look something like this and the good thing is that it will work also with caps that has never seen before because they all follow a similar pattern and pretty much is missing the color where there is nothing else to, to say about color damage the color if it's not golden color there is something wrong with the color and then we have shape damage where they look like this they are either comp almost destroyed or there is some scratch or there is something wrong with the shape uh, here um, the, probably the classification is not the best because there there are a bit mixed color sh uh, damage and shape damage so it can be improved but you get the idea and now we're going to see a real life ex a real example of how this is working in real time so let's see and this is how it will work we have real time this one moving so let me pause this one we see 
the cat damage is crossing the yellow area which we will say the region of interest where we are going to focus where we take the picture we move the picture to the artificial intelligence we see the picture on cap emg and we see cap id is the number one is the shape okay the shape is okay how is the color the color is damaged and we see color damage and the position is fine then we have cap number five, which cross is fine. Cap number six is fine. Seven is fine. Eight is fine. We have the nine. Okay, I'm, I'm, by the way, this will move, not stop. I'm pausing it just to show this how it works. The cap number nine is damage on the shape. So we see cap number nine, shape damage. Color is okay and position is fine. And so this will work all the time, no stop, unless we want to stop it. Uh, I want to see the last cap, which is a uh, cap, which is upside down, and then I will be happy with the result if we get also this one. And we see cap ID number 14 shape is fine and the color is fine, but the position is upside down. And after this, there will be the fourth step, which we are not going to see on this video because it's just a demonstration, but the fourth step will be to perform some action after we get the results from the deep learning model. For example, if we get a result that some object is damaged, either one, we can decide to stop the conveyor, conveyor belt to give the time to someone to pick up the object with the damage, or two, we can just send an alarm to say that there is something wrong with some object or we can give the coordinates to some robot arm to pick the object and throw it away and that's it regarding this project if you have a small medium company and you want some solution you can contact me i'm going to leave a link below where there is a form that you can film and i will get back to you soon Instead, if you are a developer or even if you only know basic programming of Python and you would like to learn all these things, well, on my website pysource.com I have a lot of resources and a program which will teach you all these things. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you on the next one.